Hello friends, here I am again to read another story. Today's story is Cecil the Pet Glacier. Um, you might be wondering why I have a tiara on. Well, I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to let you figure it out as we're reading the book today. So here we go, Cecil the Pet Glacier. It's a kind of unusual pet. Ruby Small was a normal little girl. Perhaps that was to make up for having two not normal at all parents. Ruby lived in a yellow and pink striped house with a chimney that was so close to sky blue that sometimes it was invisible. Outside there was a sign that read topiary and tiaras, sprigs and sparkles. Mr. Small was a topiary gardener. He trimmed trees into animal shapes. Oaks became owls, pines became platypuses, Maples became marsupials, and hedges became hedgehogs. Mrs. Small was a tiara designer. On summer evenings, Mrs. Small would put on her fanciest tiara, and Mr. Small would set up the record player, and the two would tango cheek to cheek among the topiary. Inside, Ruby would pray that no one from school would walk by. She'd pull the curtains closed and serve milk and bran muffins to the three Jennifers, her identical dolls, who were dressed like her in brown pinafores, plain black headbands, and brown shoes with the shoelaces, triple knotted. So, Hedgling, said Mr. Small one day, where would you like to go on vacation this year? In China, there is a miniature topiary herb garden I've always wanted to visit. They have a tiny rhinoceros made out of rosemary. No way muttered Ruby grumpily. Norway, what a fabulous idea, said Mrs. Small. Ruby knew there was no point in arguing. By the time vacation rolled around, the shrubs had stopped growing and Mr. Small was anxious to leave. He moped, sadly sniffing at the air. One day, he even trimmed a huge hairy crocodile into his beard. Mrs. Small piled 15 hat boxes into the car. She didn't like to repeat tiaras, even on vacation and they were off. Ruby was in charge of the passports, of course. On the plane, she stared at the photographs inside while her parents drank milk and Cokes, their favorite invented drink, and played miniature ping pong on their fold-out trays. Really, Ruby thought, it was hard to believe she was related to these people. Sometimes she felt so lonely, even with the three Jennifers. Mama? Papa? said Ruby. Yes, they answered as the tiny ping pong ball hit the passenger in front of them. When we get back, do you think I could get a pet? Why, darling, of course, said Mrs. Small. I've always thought a tank of moon medusas, those glow-in-the-dark jellyfish, would be beautiful in the living room. We could eat TV dinners in front of them. Or, said Mr. Small, I have a friend who is thinking of getting rid of his flea circus. Apparently, the little fellows are terrific at soccer. I was thinking of something a bit cuddlier, said Ruby, like a dog. Mr. and Mrs. Small looked puzzled. The first morning at the guest house in Horfin Snuffin, breakfast was four tiny fish on a piece of toast, or in her parents' case, a piece of toast on four tiny fish. They loved eating food upside down. Afterwards, the Smalls walked to the tourist office. Welcome, Smalls, a blue-haired man named Sven said. Today, Glacier. The Smalls followed Sven outside to a fleet of pink snowmobiles. Little Small, you ride with me, and said Sven. Big Small, saddle up, as they say in the American movies. After 70 minutes, or one hour and 10 minutes, Sven slowed to a stop. There are several glaciers near Horfenstofen, but this one, Cecil's Matter, is the most beautiful of all. Today, it is calving. Calving? asked Ruby. Yes, said Sven, when glaciers get too big, little glaciers break off and float down the river. It's like a cow having a baby calf. Ruby looked into the water where several little glaciers floated downstream. Some were as big as paddle boats, others were small. Ruby thought a tiny strange shaped one seemed to be approaching them. The little glacier slid down the hill and came to a stop at Ruby's ankle. Ruby moved away. The little glacier followed. Ruby hid behind her mother. The glacier hid behind Ruby. Why, Ruby, it seems you found yourself a little ice pet, said Mr. Small delightedly. Ruby and the three Jennifers looked down at the lump with dismay. Oh, no, said Ruby. Please, no. 
Sure enough, when Sven and the Smalls got back onto their snowmobiles, the little glacier followed. Back at the tourist office, Mr. Small said, I think your pet needs a name. It's not my pet, said Ruby. It's just a piece of ice. Little Small called Glacier Cecil, said Sven, and walked into his office and shut the door. From then on, Cecil was always at Ruby's ankle. She began to count the days until they could return home and leave the ice pest behind. On their last night, Mr. Small came back to the room with a red cooler and a big smile. Are we having a picnic on the plain? Ruby asked, hopefully. No, Hedgling, this is for Cecil. But I don't want him to come home with us, said Ruby. Darling, said Mrs. Small, you wanted a pet, and a pet has found you. And he sparkles like a diamond. You couldn't have found a more delightful pet if you dreamed him up. Ruby scowled. At the airport, Ruby prayed that the baggage inspectors will, would not let Cecil leave the country. But Cecil sailed right through the x-ray machine. Back at home, the Smalls discovered that a pet glacier has special needs. For one thing, Cecil ate pebbles. Every night, the Smalls would put a plate of pebbles on the floor, and Cecil would glide over to it and absorb them, finicky like a cat. He liked white and black pebbles, but wouldn't eat the gray ones. He didn't speak, but when he was happy, he creaked. Because Cecil was made of very hard ice, he could make it through a sunny day. But every night, he needed to be watered with ice water, then put in the red cooler. Rain was bad for him because it was never cold enough, and it made him melt. Once a week, Mrs. Small would turn Cecil upside down and groom him. Often, he'd have picked up trash from the road, a soda can, a branch, a lottery ticket, or chewed gum. But Ruby had no interest in her pet. On weekends, she and the three Jennifers would go into their room and lock Cecil out. He would nudge the door, leaving a wet patch below the doorknob. After a bit, he would slide sadly back to his cooler. Poor Cecil. On weekdays, Cecil would follow Ruby to school and wait for her in the bushes. At recess, he would peer through the fence at Ruby and the three Je Jennifers playing in a corner. Once, to tease Ruby, two mean boys tangoed past her, making a small tear run down her cheek. Cecil shed a tear then, too, from the area where his eyes would have been if it had eyes, which he didn't. One recess, Ruby's class was deep in a game of foursquare when a lightning storm hit. Miss Smith, Ruby's teacher, hurried the children inside, then looked around the playground. In a hidden corner, Ruby was carefully putting raincoats on the three Jennifers. Mrs. Smith charged over, grabbed Ruby's hand, and hurried her into the classroom. In the commotion, Ruby dropped one of the three Jennifers into the mud. Wait, she cried, but Miss Smith had already shut the door behind them. As Mrs. Smith was toweling off the class, Ruby stood by the window and watched the rain wash the Jennifer away. Ruby burst into loud sobs. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a small white lump. It was Cecil, moving back and forth across the playground. As the rain pelted him, he grew smaller and smaller until Ruby thought he'd disappear entirely. Just as geography was about to begin, there was a thumping at the door. Mrs. Smith opened it, and the class craned their necks to see. In the doorway, a very small piece of ice with a Jennifer sticking out of it. Cecil, cried Ruby, you found her. Oh, Cecil. The class looked at Ruby in amazement. Then, help, I need some ice water and a plate of pebbles, she cried with such authority that two of her classmates did exactly as they were told. Ruby watered Cecil, watched him move weakly across the plate of pebbles, and put him in the cafeteria freezer. Only then did she change the Jennifer's soaked clothes. Later that afternoon, Cecil was allowed to sit next to Ruby in class. After math, a quiet boy named Murphy, who often read books at recess, came over and asked, Can I pet him? Ruby looked up startled. Well, he's very cold. You'll have to get a mitten or something. Murphy took one of the towels, wrapped it around his hand, and stroked Cecil's back. What a wonderful pet, he said. I've never seen anything like it. Ruby smiled. He's pretty unusual, isn't he? Cecil creaked more than he had ever creaked before. After school let out, two children walking, three dolls riding, and one glacier sliding, went home to the Smith's house. As she walked through the garden, Ruby picked up a pair of scissors and handed them to her father, who was in a tree trying to perfect a penguin. Then she knocked on her mother's studio door. 
Mama, she asked. Yes, Ruby, replied Mrs. Small. If you want to make a tiara for Cecil, said Ruby, I don't think he'd mind. The end. So, Cecil the pet glacier. Do you know why I wore the tiara now? It's unusual to meet a tiara maker in a book. Um, I think Ruby is the character that changed the most in this story. And she went from not really wanting a pet glacier to really enjoying what he had to offer, really actually wanting him to be her pet and actually being proud of Cecil in the end and appreciating that although he was different, he had a lot to offer. And that's a lesson I think we can all take. Although we can all be different, we all have something to offer. Even Cecil the Pet Glacier. I hope you enjoyed our story today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I miss you and I will see you again soon. Love you guys. Bye.